Can you please welcome Ben to the microphone? Uh, so I'm Ben, I'm a coder, philosopher, and storyteller, and that is basically just what I have done in the past. I have a philosophy degree, I did novel writing, and I'm finally in code, which I'm actually really excited about. It's been really fun so far in the last four months that I've been doing it. Um, so what I'm here to talk to you about is the burden of jargon on junior developers. Uh, basically, I think this is a problem that we don't always recognize in the community, and it's one of those ones which is a little bit hard to navigate your around, way around all the time. So I just want to talk about firstly what it is, how we can do better as a community, and a possible solution to that. And so jargon. Jargon is one of those things, so you start learning to program, and you have to learn JavaScript, HTML, CSS, maybe Ruby, maybe you need to learn a framework as well, so you've got all these different language-y things, and then you've got this other thing that no one actually tells you you have to learn. You never have to think about it in that way, but there's an entire subset of language which is just about talking about code with other people. So you end up in this situation where there are a huge number of words that you'll need to know just to understand what someone tells you, to ask questions, and to understand the answers that you're getting, which don't require writing a line of code. So for example, if we had a sentence like this, or a couple of sentences, Ajax didn't correctly hand over the JSON, and that means the way that we filter the past data is wrong. Uh, then there was a problem with my jQuery, but I'm not certain, and I wasn't able to find the error in the console. Maybe if I try a different CSS selector to grab the HTML element, here's a link to the GitHub repo. So, I'm assuming almost everyone in this room will understand the terms in red. But, um, Unfortunately, when you learn, these are all things that you have to come across. They're either existing words, or they're words you know but not in the context. Essentially, you end up with an internal dictionary of terms that might look something like this. <laughs> um, and then if you were to talk to someone about it and say, hey, what's jQuery, and they just handed you the code, you'd get something that looked like this. Uh, and so on. Uh, and handing them the jQuery file really doesn't help answer the question what jQuery is. And that's sort of the crux of the issue. It's not just about what the code is, it's about understanding what it does, and being able to talk about it in semi-plain English. Um, so I just want to really stress that there's a difference between good jargon and bad jargon. I want to start with a different industry we can bag on, which has a lot of bad jargon in it. Uh, so we have legalese. Uh, so in law, there are a whole lot of terms where you have three words in a row and people are like, oh, this is, must be a really important technical distinction. Without this kind of stuff, the law just wouldn't function, whatever. Uh, this isn't really the case. 600 years ago, when they were doing law, uh, court cases in England, um, you'd end up having to present and be able to talk in English, Latin, and French. So a whole lot of people at the time would give important terms in English, Latin, and French to prove how smart they were. And 600 years later, there are lawyers who get paid a lot of money because they happen to know what all these terms mean and where to use them in the correct context, because otherwise they get laughed at for using incorrect terms. And that's really a clear case of bad jargon. That's not serving a useful function for the legal community uh, in communicating with each other, except possibly if they want to keep new people out. Um, now, I reckon that the programming community isn't like that with their jargon. Most jargon within the programming community really is interested in um, conveying information quickly, because the advantage of jargon is you manage to compress a lot of information into short words. Um, the two types of jargon you tend to encounter in programming, there are things like uh, library as a word, or framework, and these are just words that we've reappropriated for a new context, and then there are names. Um, and names are the reason I think this is really important to JavaScript specifically, because uh, I think the hyperbole is we have a new framework every week. So if you want to keep up with all the frameworks, you're going to have to learn a lot of jargon just so you can have conversations about it. Uh, so the kind of way I'd end up defining these jargon terms would be something like this. Um, so jQuery is a JavaScript library used to select and manipulate HTML elements. And Note that if you're completely new, you might not understand what a library is or what a HTML element is, but 
this is going to be way more useful to you than the previous slide, which just had the start of jQuery's code. Um, so what can you do as a developer in the community if you happen to come across one of these new developers? So the first thing is to remember that knowledge is not the same as ability. Sometimes you'll come across someone who might actually have a really good brain for programming, they might just not know the particular term you're using, or they might not have that kind of formal knowledge base. And that doesn't mean that they won't be able to do the code, talk about the code, it just means that they don't have that bit of learning yet. Um, the next thing to do is when you're talking to someone, try and watch if they seem to be understanding it. If you're using a term and people don't seem to be getting what the term is, maybe stop, try and provide a one sentence-ish description of what that term is, just so that they can keep up and actually follow everything else you're saying, which they're hopefully really interested in. Um, and the final thing is, be okay when people don't know terms. And if they ask about it, try and really hard to have a good answer for them that actually helps them, and just clarify that you have actually helped them learn, because sometimes you, you wouldn't want to accidentally confuse them further. Um, but I didn't think it would be very developer here to just come up and talk about that as a solution. So I also thought about how we could improve this further. Uh, so I built this as a thing. So this is one of will work. It will absolutely work and it won't make me cry forever. Um, so the basic idea was to provide an app that would act as a dictionary for jargon terms. This one's specifically for JavaScript that could easily be extended out. And we've got pretty basic idea. So if you can request a definition and a new term, so if I was going to be like, term is a thing, add, sweet, term is now a thing, or thin, as the case may be. Um, and that's all well and good, but it relies on the website being up to date. And unless you've got some really dedicated people who are going to sit here and type every word they know about jargon, and then whenever they hear about a new framework, come back and help you out. That's not going to work. So say we wanted to know the definition of stuff, we can <laughs> correct our typos and leave our Twitter handle. So what happens when I do this is, unfortunately, there's no visual feedback. But if we jump over to Twitter, uh, this account should can you define stuff and provide you a link? And this link doesn't actually load it, but if we go to the undefined terms <coughs> list, we can now see that, oh, stuff is here. So stuff is, I don't know, useful. <laughs> we define it, and then when we jump back here again, we have a yeah, very nicely taken your photo. Thank you. Um, and then after that, we have a new tweet where it tweets at the account you leave and gives you what you ask for and the definition that's been provided. This is basically to try and get it as fast as possible to get the feedback that you want about the term so that you're not left in a situation where you have to go any further. Uh, and it's meant to be easy for senior developers because. All they need to do is follow the Twitter account, and if they see someone's requested a term, they get across, so they actually get the information pushed into a uh, service they're already using. Um, so I just want to thank my mom. Um, she helped me a lot with getting the writing down and helping the speech practice. Adios Mani, whose tutorial I completely ripped off uh, to the code for the website. Um, and that was very useful, because I got it done a lot faster. Uh, Jackson Dole from General Assembly, because they're responsible for teaching me. Uh, Harry for helping me debug earlier today. Uh, and all of you, thanks. It's been great. Um, and I've been really enjoying JavaScript community so far. Um, I'll say it. Uh, so that feature is in development. 
good answer. <laughs> There'll be a find button so that you can provide additional answers, and then it'll be able to be filtered by which answer people like the most. One last one. Annie, currently looking for a job. Yes, I am currently looking for a job, having just finished the general assembly course. Thank you, Annie. Good to thank Benny employees.